is Jackie Williams and thanks so much for joining me. Tonight I want to focus on the Welcoming Woods stamp set and I think this is a great one. I always gravitate towards the stamp sets and images that have trees because trees are really good for sympathy, masculine cards, Christmas, and then can be general for birthdays and thank yous and things. And this one is especially good because it's a distinctive stamp which means that all you have to do is ink it up and stamp and it has incredible detail. So let's go to my work desk and do some projects. So this is the Welcoming Woods stamp set and you can see that it's got these wonderful tree trunks with beautiful detailing and these are the distinctive stamps which means you just ink them, stamp them and they have this wonderful detail. We have some snowflakes and some leaves and then some nice words to go with it. So first thing I want to do is show you how well or how nicely these stamp out. So I have just a piece of very vanilla and some early espresso ink and my tree trunk stamps. So what I'm going to do first is ink up my stamps. Now these distinctive stamps work best with ink pads that aren't really, really wet and juicy just so that you can get the detail and then you can stamp this down. This also works really well with the Stamparatus. And look at that. You can see it's got just such nice depth and detail in that image just by inking and stamping. Now there is also in this stamp set this kind of funny looking one. And what that is, is you can use the same color or different color and you can stamp that in between your trees like this. And that just gives you a bit of a horizon. That looks quite nice if you want to make, um, for example, like a lake or some greenery. And then I'm going to just use the leaves, but you could use your snowflakes or even other images from other stamp sets. And again, you can use that in them in different colors or the same color, depending what kind of a look you want. And these, I determined, don't really go any particular way and you can just stamp them and they stamp out a little more solid than your tree trunks so even if they overlap onto the trees they're going to be darker than the trees have stamped out even using the exact same ink pad next i want to show you a look called black ice and there's a few steps to this and you can do some of them or all of them. And so what I have here is a piece of foil and I'm using the gold brush metallic foil, but you can use the copper or the silver or any color you choose, probably just not black. Now it is necessary that you have a black stays on ink pad because it needs to be a permanent ink for this technique. I'm just gonna turn this to the side because it. I just find that more comfortable. And then we're gonna take the edge of our ink pad and just run that along and use a fairly light hand, at, at least at first, until you have an idea of how wet your ink pad is. And just to get that little bit of a blackened edge along the two sides, or you could do it along four sides if you want to, but I'm just gonna leave it at two. And then you've got some black streaks in through there. Now, stays on ink does dry very quickly. So we're going to ink up our stamp, but you want to ink it and then stamp, you know, fairly um, quickly. Again, I'm going to turn it to the side. I can just see it better that way. We're going to just stamp that down onto our foil. Now, stays on is a little bit of a sticky ink, so if it kind of sticks to your paper, that's normal. And then I'm just going to do an. Oops, I did the wrong side. Another layer of trees, just, just so that you're not limited to just the size of this stamp. You can just keep stamping it um, to get a larger image. That actually looks really good just as is. So you can leave it just like that and use it. If you want to go that one more step to add the ice look to it, you will want a Versamark pad and some clear embossing powder. Now you'll want to make sure that your black stays on ink has completely dried. It shouldn't take long because it is an alcohol based ink. You could also just whiz it with your heat tool if you wanted. Now I'm using my driest, yuckiest Versamark. You don't want one that's brand new and really wet because you just want to get streaks of Versamark, not um, completely 
solid. So what I'm doing is again using the edge just like we did with the stays on and just with the weight of the pad, you don't want to press it at all, just dragging it across very, very lightly. Oops, I might just turn that this way. And then we will put clear embossing powder over the top and it should just go on in like streaks. So this is actually the look that we want where you can see there's some patches that doesn't have embossing powder and it's very kind of streaky looking. And then we'll heat that with our heat tool till it goes clear. The end result, I think you can see that you'll just get these patchy like icicle looking bits of the clear embossing powder. And here is what the finished card looks like. And this one I used the more champagne colored uh, foil, so you can see the difference there. And I kept it square and then just layered it onto a square card and accented with the gold shimmer ribbon. And this one I decided to actually make into a sympathy card. I thought it was very appropriate, being very serene looking. Now for our next idea, using the Welcoming Woods stamp set, I am using a piece of watercolor paper and I have gone ahead and already white embossed the tree trunks onto the watercolor paper and I've stamped it twice as you just saw me do, so once and then twice. And then this time instead of using clear embossing powder, I've used white embossing powder. And what we're gonna do is do a little bit of embossed resist. So what I would recommend when using watercolor paper is you get your, uh, your water painter and just go ahead and get your watercolor paper wet first, like this. And then I like to make a watercolor wash. So that's I've just got some little dishes with water and I'm just gonna use some drops of ink refill. So I'm gonna use Mossy Meadow. And I see I got quite a bit of water there and soft succulent, which are two very different greens. One is a yellow green and one of it is a blue green. So we'll just see how this looks. I, I quite like experimenting with color. So I think I'll do the more yellowy green at the bottom. And you can see where the tree trunks are, it's resisting the ink and those little dark dots where it's resisting, let me get into the camera, will either just kind of um, move off on, onto the paper or I can wipe them off with a tissue later. Now, what I would recommend is that you let each layer dry and then if you wanna add a little bit more color, you can. Now, the color's moving a bit, as you can see, but I'm okay with that. Okay, then I'm just gonna clean off my brush and all you need to do is do this. And then I'm going to grab that soft succulent and I'm going to come in from the top. Oh, actually, I really like these colors together. Now, I'm not going to meet them. I'm going to leave a little bit of a white uh, area in between. That's just des for design. There's no like real reason, except while they're wet, they would actually merge. But if you let the layers dry in between, then you could um, bring the colors to meet each other if you wanted to. Now what I would do is just let that dry and then you could add a bit more dark, another layer so it's darker up at the top and at the bottom. You could even add a few more drops of ink to make the actual wash that little bit darker if you wanted to for your next layer. That's gonna turn out gorgeously. So here's a finished sample of one that I did with actually Granny Apple Green and Coastal Cabana. So a very different look, but I just wanted to experiment with that. And then I took my Wink of Stella pen and just flicked it against the lid. So I've got these like splatters of shimmery paint actually, which looks quite nice. And then decided I would just use a bright pink bird just as a complete contrast and accent. I really like how this one turned out. So I like, I hope you like this one too. Now for my third example, I want to do a slimline card so I can show you how you could make like a whole forest of trees. And this time I want to go more monochromatic. And I'm going to use my favorite color when going monochromatic, which is gray granite. So we'll go ahead and ink up our trees. I find it easier to work sideways, so hopefully that doesn't bother you too much. And it is helpful to have grid paper just to make sure you're lining up those trees 
and then stamp that down. And you'll notice I do have a stamp mat underneath me. You will get a better result, particularly when using your photopolymer stamps, if you have that stamp mat underneath you. And then one more. Okay, so we'll end up with a look like this. And then just to bring in um, some of the color down here at the bottom and make it look not quite so bare, I'm gonna use my blending brush and the gray granite. And again, I like to work sideways and just bring in some of that color in here through the bottom. It just adds something without really detracting from your main image. And there you go, I love how that looks. And I love gray granite as a monochromatic color. I would use the sequins, the subtle shimmer sequins in through there. Now, a lot of, some of those are silver, but some of them are white or more clear. And so be sure to use your take your pick tool. Actually, I should be using that to clean those up to uh, put your sequins on. So what I would do is do dots of glue through the trees and then just pick up the sequins and drop the sequins onto the dots of glue. So let me show you the finished sample. So I thought I'd make this one into a beautiful monochromatic Christmas card and just using the playful alphabet dies to write joy and the bright red or real red ribbon across the top just as a really nice contrast and hopefully you can see those sequins in through the trees. In addition, I took the white chalk marker and just accented those white elements in through the trees just to give them that little bit more depth too. All right, let me show you a few other samples. Now, this is one that I actually shared on a video I did some months ago showcasing watercolor pencils. So for this one, I just took the watercolor pencils and scribbled uh, across some shimmer paper and then took my water painter and then just brushed over it and just blended out all of the colors for kind of a watercolored look in the background. And then this sample, I've stamped the trees in early espresso and then stamped the leaves in cinnamon cider, real red and bumblebee to give more of an autumn look. And then I've done my words, I hope that you can see those in the copper embossing powder and then accented with the copper brushed metallic gems. And then I have one more Christmas card sample. And this one I've stamped in basic gray and paired with the evening evergreen and soft sea foam for kind of a monochromatic look, but something just a little bit different than the red and green. So I hope you've enjoyed those and um, you'll give that welcoming woods a try. I had a lot of fun playing with these. There's lots of different techniques you can do with these or even just keep it quite simple and plain because the images have such wonderful detail. Thanks again for joining me this evening. And if you would like to order the Welcoming Wood stamp set, the link is below this video. And if you have any questions or would like to leave me a nice comment, please do so as well. I'd love to hear from all of you and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.